What's up, traders? We've got an awesome video. We're going over the biggest payout that James has received to date from his over one year of being funded through FTMO. This payout was over $10,000. So we're going to pick apart uh, what James did and what James didn't do that led him to success over the last month. So sit back and enjoy the episode. Welcome back, everybody. So we've got a very exciting video today. James just got his biggest payout ever so far being funded. Correct, James? Yeah, that's right. And how long have you been funded for? Uh, this will be coming up on a year now. Yeah, nice. A year. Nice. With FTMO. Yeah, correct. Nice. And I think today we're going to talk, you know, of course, about the things that you've done really well or at least what you think you've done really well. I'll share what I think you've done really well to help get to that point. But I also think it's important to talk about the things, like you just said before we started the recording, the things that you don't do that actually help you trade really well. So let's jump in with that right away because I think everybody's excited that you know they're really happy for you. I'm sure people are gonna be hitting the comments saying, you know, congrats, James, congrats, which is awesome. But let's really get some tactics out of you today to give the people listening something to not say, just say this is a motivational video. Let's say there's some real yep. techniques in here. So first, I wanna ask you about like you said, on these bank holiday weeks, these weeks where there's NFP, where there's big news events, what do you think uh, during these weeks has helped you be successful? Because a lot of people get chopped up during these weeks. They take a lot of unnecessary losses. So what do you think has led to the success and survival, if if it's want to call it that, during the choppier yeah. weeks, the news-filled weeks? I think just, uh, you know, seeing the market as um, like an, abund an abundance of opportunity, you can always come back next week and then the re next week will be what, the 6th of June and you've got a whole month to trade without any NFP, any bank holidays really. Um, so I think on my side, it was just, I think what's helped me stay in the game and stay funded is just, yeah, being knowing when the market could potentially be more choppier than, than, um, than most, right, than most times. So I think that's one one thing that has uh, really been a key for me. And then another thing is like traders want to make, so once you fund it, you don't need to be trading every day. You got that account, especially with FTMO, they've been around since 2015. So you got that account indefinitely until, you know, you could be making, you know, good money from a 200, 400 grand account every single month from them. So I think just seeing it as, um, as you know, not uh, if traders want to make money every single day, and that's not the case. You got you can't every single trade you place isn't going to be profitable. So I think just right. either halving the risk or not even just maybe marking stuff up or just demo trading during these tough weeks. Well, especially once you fund it, there's no rush. So I think that's what has helped me. What what news events specifically are you looking to avoid, or or uh, what, what, what weeks of the month? Give us more detail in that direction. For, so obviously NFP first Friday of every single month is NFP. Definitely not trading on that. Like. Even if you're trading another pair that doesn't have a USD quote pair in it, it just can be super choppy. It, it's just, it tends to do that. Yep. Maybe what I've been doing lately is obviously trading indices as you've got me into that. Maybe industry trading could be a little bit better during those weeks. But then again, so maybe that's another aspect that I think as we as you're having your ASFX TV stream now with um, US 30, and that had some good volatility. NASDAQ had some good volatil volatility and some good moves. Um, so maybe just trading another asset that isn't linked to currencies because obviously nfp is majority for uh based on on currencies it's a great point that's a great point do you look to like the fed meetings or anything like that interest rate decisions do you are those i feel like those are more the events where we just don't trade into that event but you still yeah. might trade earlier that day right yeah, hundred percent. But so there is another event as well would be the FOMC meeting minutes. I've just from pre previous experience, I've had some of my worst days trading, not from a results point of view, but just from a mentally frustrating point of view where you're getting chopped around in markets and because every the whole the whole currency market's waiting for that FOMC meeting minutes to be released. So I know on days like that, if I do come, I see a nice setup that I like, I will take it, but maybe I'll take it with maybe half reduced risk, right? Just, or, or, you know, since I got like a good chunk of capital with the funding companies, with my private capital, I might not even take the trade. Just, you know, um, I think that's what's helped me, uh, you know, edge out profitable months, month in, month out. So survival is what you do well. And like I said at the yep. beginning, it's almost like what you don't do. You don't trade during those choppier weeks that you know you yep. get chopped up. So you just stop trading. I think another thing you do, 
you do it well, but it's something you're not doing. After you trade, you just walk off the desk. Like if you take a trade and you win in the London session, you very rarely trade the New York session. You might be there, you might be generating ideas, but you might not put money at risk because you're just looking to compound those wins. I think that's another thing you've done really well. And on top of that, you've increased your win rate over 80%. And with the approach of taking most of your profit at 1R, at an 80% win rate, you're really able to see the compounded growth. And that leads to a five-figure payout on the account sizes that you're trading. This could be a six-figure payout soon. It will be once you have more capital to trade with. So 100%. which part is more important to you? Is it more important to take most of your profit at 1R and be snagging and bagging like that? Or is it more important to you to be locking your stop loss and mitigating risk? Is one more important than the other? I think just for me, I think, I think I do really well, especially my sack of my trading does really well when I'm bagging those profits. So I'm taking profits at one or, or and locking the stop, or sometimes I'm taking the full trade, full trade at one or depending on the setup that it's given me, you know, every trade's different. Um, but I, I think, as you mentioned, like I'm, if I have a nice winner during London, like you'll really see me trading during uh, New York. And I think it just, uh, I think that has helped my psychology and that's what I want to get. Like, I'm also thinking about the future. Like when I'm, cause I see myself doing this as a career for many years to come. If I can continue generating um, monthly returns like this, there's no reason for me not to be doing this when I'm 70 years old. Right. But when I'm 70 years old, let's say I'm still trading. Um, you don't want to be on the desk the whole day. So I'm also putting in my, in my, in that, in that, in putting myself in that mindset of my future self of like, okay, cool. You know, like trying to be, um, the best version of myself, Great point. one and done, snag and bag, and then be because I want to spend time with my girlfriend, family, friends. I want to go play golf. Um, I've made my money for the day. There's no point to be greedy and try and you know have the best day I've ever had. Um, if I've had a good trade in the morning, I hope everybody listening, or at least one person listening, we click the light bulb for them that you get into trading to make money, not to be a trader and be stuck at the desk all day placing trades. We're trying to make as much money in a short amount of time as possible. And if you stack up those wins, you gain more capital, which makes the wins get bigger. And that's where compounding growth comes in. So now that you've hit this big goal of first five-figure payout, what's next? Are you trying to scale up with FTMO? Give us some context. Like if, you, if someone was in your position, because like a lot of people can think about like, all right, I just got to get funded. I just got to get funded. But now that you're funded, you've been funded and you're getting paid out. What do you say to the guys that are like, what's the, how do you go bigger from here? Are you working yeah. with another funding company? What are your thoughts on the next move? So definitely my, one of my goals by the end of the year is to um, have a million dollars under funding with the two funding companies that in my opinion are the best. Um, that's obviously FTMO as um, you've stated and in my Forex funds. So my goals are, and they've just obviously come out with that new 300K. So uh, my goal is to, to have a um, million dollars by the end of this year under, under management, just with prop trading uh, firms. Love it. Love it. Love it. When you, encounter new traders who want to get funded what's the number one thing that you tell them to focus on when they're trying to pass those first phase one phase two challenges sure i would say um obviously mff uh my folks funds don't offer a free trial i always tell them either demo or take a ftmo free trial because there's no point taking a challenge if you've never made it eight to 10% in a month. And now you want to go take a challenge, but you've right. never done it before. That's right. just silly. You're going to give away. You're either going to, obviously you could end in profit, get a free retry, but what's the point? Rather do it and have the confidence that you've made 8% in a month or 10% in a month. Um, and don't do it on your personal account because there's no drawdown markers there or anything like that with the rules. I mean, there's right. no rules when you're trading your own capital. Right. Um, um, so obviously I would say do that free trial and do, do, pass it at least three times before you get some confidence in taking a, a, um, a funding challenge. How many trades per week do you normally take? What does it average out to like in a month? Probably, three. So, uh, yeah, I would say I, obviously lately it has been a bit choppy, but I would say I could find a trade like once a day. I, yeah. I could find a trade once a day. If I, but what, yeah. what about, I know you could find it and you mark it up, but, but the ones you actually take maybe. Probably three, probably three, probably three, averaging on three. Yeah. Yeah. Averaging because some three. weeks you do five yeah. and then other weeks you do one or zero. Exactly. Like the last, the last two to three weeks, I'll probably have on average like one to two a week, but then right. other weeks I could have like six or seven, which is more than one a day, obviously. So I think it just depends on the market cycles. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what, do you say what, people, what do you say to the people that are like, that's not enough trades? Um, well, I always say do less, do it better, do it bigger. If you can get, if you can get your, your bag from one trade, um, it's it's silly to take another trade uh, later on in the day because you need to get this goal. More trading more does not equal more uh, profits.
Um, it's very, that's the, it's very, parad uh, it's a paradox in trading, but um, yeah, trading more does not equal more profits and also leads to more frustration because let's say, this is why I've also adopted this, you know, get off the desk once I've had a good trade because I know myself and I can be a bit edgy at the desk. Like if I'm sitting here with you guys in the, in the black show club discord and I'm like, and you guys are looking at a trade, I'm like, shit, that looks nice. I'd want to trade it. But if I've had a good win in the morning, let's say that trade ends up being a loser. Um, now I'm basically could be a back at break even, right? Whereas right. if I just yeah. walked away for the day, I'll come back tomorrow, get my piece of the cake again tomorrow and then just do the same thing over right. and over. Right. I would say to those people, they just need more capital too. You know what I mean? My, I thought that's what you were going to say. They need more money. You don't need more trades. You need more money to trade with. Because if you have an 80% win rate like James and you're going to win at 1R and take most of your profit at 1R, lock your stop, you're, you're going to make a ton of money no matter what. It, so you don't need to trade a lot. You just need more money to trade with. I think that's a huge thing. 100%. Right? I think that's a mess. I think that's a great point. Yeah. Um, also, uh, like the, the funding companies, I'm, the money that I'm getting that, I'm just pumping into my personal account, which obviously- right as I've been building up quite nicely over the years as well. So um, on top of my personal account, I'm also making money from the, the funding company. So it's just, yeah, you got more capital, you make more money. What are you looking at most right now? Are you looking at just a few Forex pairs and just a few indices? Are you looking only at one thing? Like, what are you focused on that's helped you get to this point? Uh, so I think the, obviously you cut down my list quite a lot when I first joined you. So obviously we're looking at mostly, uh, Forex pairs when I first got into you guys, I think it was like 20 Forex pairs, 25 yeah. Forex pairs, somewhere around there. Obviously now, um, having more capital, you don't need to be looking. I found myself also, it's less stressful and you, to look at so many different pairs. So I'm really sure. only looking to trade GJ, GU and the three main US indexes, which is uh, the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ and the S&P 500. That's really what I'm looking to trade um, on a daily basis. Um, I do mark up Bitcoin and that, um, but uh, yeah, I'm just comfortable trading those five um, assets uh, for now. Beautiful. So for the people that are looking at of like seven different things in Forex and then five other instruments in commodities or indices, it's almost too much. You know, I think what someone even asked today on my live stream, they were like, do you think it's smart to focus on one thing? I said, yes, but it has to be the right thing. You don't want to focus on Euro CHF. Like yeah, that would not make sense. Course. But if you're focused on Bitcoin right now and you're just getting into bit, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's got to be the right I think thing to focus on, you know? Yeah. So, and also like, Good. Sorry to cut off. Also, like you, you know, you get to a feel for how those currencies or commodities or uh, indexes, indices are moving on an sure. everyday basis as well. Sure. You, you, you're going to come in from the previous day and be like, well, I was trying to buy US study yesterday. didn't find a thing now, obviously, and it's still holding a good mark, uh, structure today. We could see um, the move today. You know what I'm saying? So you got start to get in line with your, um, in sync with your watch list as well. Absolutely. Has FTMO reach out to you to do any videos since you've been funded for so long so when i first um joined them i actually said that i didn't i didn't answer out the sheets or anything i said i don't want to um do the you know they put in the highlights and everything like that so i said no so maybe that's why but there um yeah so maybe i'll get in contact with them there <laughs> well I, I think you don't you bro you're the guy and this is what i admire about you like you're the guy it's like you don't really care as long as you're making money and people say that, but they don't really believe it. You actually don't care as long as you're making money. And I love that about you. That's why I think people like learning from you. I think if I could be um, super analytical of your entire trading performance, I think you have a lot of room to grow in your playbooking trades and your yep. generating ideas. Like I said before, you do generate a lot of ideas that you don't take, but I love reading your markups and everybody does. We all love it when you type more, but like I said, you're not that guy that sits there and types <laughs> a million notes on a chart like Tom, you know? So it's so interesting yeah. to see like how you have this other strength in your profit taking and your entry selection and all your strength is so there your strength isn't as much in the da data collection and the back testing yeah. and all. no that's not your thing you're like just show me what to do and i'll do it exactly how you think we need to do it to make money and i think that that's 100%. that's what you need bro you that's that you that um you're like the the guy at the front of the line if that's the way to describe it like you're the guy that's going to take that shot at the end of the game that's what i think yep. you have to be as the trader you know like the guy we're passing the ball into with half a second left and you're taking that shot right that's yeah. and i think that tom and i talked about this recently 
that's the characteristic that I think separates the really good traders from the rest because those guys want the pressure. They want the mm. performance sport. They want that. And you love that. And I think that's why you've been able to thrive. And that's why people like watching your journey because they see you're a regular ass dude, but you're super disciplined and super motivated and that motivates them. So the reason we made this video today, no promo of any courses, no promo of anything, just yep. highlighting your success because it's motivation for the people that are year one, year two, maybe up and down in their journey, not hitting stride yet you're motivate your proof that it's doable you know and that's why i think 100%. it's important to highlight it so i appreciate yeah. you giving us the time i know you everybody that listened all the way through to the end of this video james didn't want to do this he's so humble he didn't even want to make a video and talk about it i have to convince him but i know that it's motivational to everybody so i know it's valuable so if you listened all the way through make sure you hit the thumbs up give some love to james in the comments make sure you're following him on twitter and instagram i'll put the links for that in the description as well and uh, until next time, until our next episode, thank you, brother, yep. and congrats again. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it.